Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Grant, we beseech thee, O Lord, that the world may be regulated in its course by thy governance for our peace, and that thy church may with tranquil devotion rejoice. Words from the Collect today for the fourth Sunday after Pentecost. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. From Easter onward, it is amazing how many passages from the lessons and the Gospels for the Holy Mass have to do with fatherhood. Most notably, His Majesty, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and His Father above, that connection. So let's review some of these. We start with Low Sunday. It's the first Sunday after Easter. He said, therefore, to them again, Peace be to you. As the Father hath sent me, I also send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them, and he said to them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost, whose sins you shall forgive, they are forgiven them, and whose sins you shall retain, they are retained. So we see here, connecting to the fatherhood of God gives power to reorder souls through confession and the forgiveness of sins. Good Shepherd Sunday. It's the second Sunday after Easter. We hear this. I am the good shepherd. I know mine, and mine know me. As the Father knoweth me, and I know the Father, and I lay down my life for my sheep, Therefore doth the Father love me, because I lay down my life, that I may take it up again. Connecting to the fatherhood of God gives power to guide and govern souls as shepherds. And to love truly. To love truly. Not fake love, real love. And to make sacrifice. Third Sunday after Easter, we hear this. A little while, and now you shall not see me. And again, a little while, and you shall see me, because I go to the Father. Connecting to the fatherhood of God gives power to order things to heaven above. Fourth Sunday after Easter, because I go to the Father, you shall see me no longer. Again, connecting to the fatherhood of God makes an ordering to things heavenly now possible. Fifth Sunday after Easter, in that day you shall ask in my name, and I say not to you that I will ask the Father for you, for the Father himself loveth you, because you have loved me, and have believed that I came out from God. I came forth from the Father, and am come into the world. Again, I leave the world, and I go to the Father. Connecting to the fatherhood of God gives power to have prayers heard. Ascension Thursday. And eating together with them, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but should wait for the promise of the Father, which you have heard, saith he, by my mouth. Connecting to the fatherhood of God gives power to have promises heard fulfilled. The Sunday after the ascension, the hour cometh that whosoever killeth you will think that he doth a service to God. And these things will they do to you because they have not known the Father nor me. Connecting to the Father of God, the fatherhood of God, gives the ability to know God, the Father. That is a very special gift, more than we may realize, because we're so used to it. People do not know God. We do. Why? Because we have a connection. Pentecost. If anyone loves me, he will keep my word, and my Father will love him. And we will come to him, and will make our abode with him. But that the world may know that I love the Father 
And as the Father hath given me commandment, so do I. Connecting to the fatherhood of God gives the indwelling of the Holy Trinity, the power to unite our hearts to God, and that God will love us. God the Father loves them that do this. Holy Trinity Sunday. Going therefore teach ye all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Connecting to the fatherhood of God gives power to reorder the world, especially through baptism. And finally, Corpus Christi, as the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, the same also shall live by me. Connecting to the fatherhood of God brings us heavenly food, bread of angels, even in this life. Now, as noted, these passages have important themes running through them and have much to do with the fatherhood and the state of the world today. From the time of Adam's fall in paradise, fatherhood has suffered. Order has suffered, both on the inside of man, on the outside. Thus, we heard in the lesson today from St. Paul, the groaning of all creation and that we ourselves groan. His power to know, that is man's power to know and love truly, have suffered. Prayers are not easily answered. Promises await fulfillment. It's hard to stay in a state of grace, one might argue. In a word, fatherhood and order are intimately linked. When fatherhood thrives... Order is present everywhere, and all that flows from it such that peace and tranquility are experienced. Connections to heaven are made and maintained, because there's only one Father, and we participate in that one fatherhood of God. But when fatherhood fails, when fatherhood fails, we will pass through disordered times. Unity of hearts will suffer Souls and whole nations will live in darkness. Prayers won't be answered. Promises will not be fulfilled. And we're living in a most disordered time. And that means fatherhood must be suffering terribly. And it is. As we've discussed before, fatherhood is at the top of the list as to why his majesty came down from heaven. God does things first for himself and then for us. I know it's hard for us to hear that sometimes. We think he did everything for us. No, he did it first for himself. God made the cosmos, the universe, first and foremost for his glory. That's why he made you and that's why he made me, for his glory. Then he made the universe to be a palace for the bride, the church. God the Son became man to know and to love and to adore God the Father perfectly in this creation, in his cosmos. And he came to order all things to God. But also God the Son's tender heart wanted to repair the damages done to God the Father by us. He wanted to do so in superabundance in measure far beyond what we needed by God's justice for men to be saved. In other words, in a word, God comes first, period. All fathers need to do the exact same. Both spiritual fathers, priests, and fathers of families. If the repairs to fatherhood, the fatherhood wound that haunts us, are going to be effective, fathers need to put God first. Every day, from their waking moments, ordering all to him ought to be a priority. The fact that we are in a huge crisis of fatherhood shows that this has been greatly neglected. Why should we persevere in the priesthood, for example, or the religious life, or a marriage, or remaining faithful Catholics? Because we want to imitate his majesty who came 
seeking to repair fatherhood and bring order back to the world. Why? Because his majesty said to us, Seek ye therefore first the kingdom of God and his justice, and all these things will be added unto you. Not surprisingly, the Fatima message has the same fatherhood theme running throughout. Focusing especially on the repairs needed for the nation of Russia to reunite with the Holy Father. One of the themes of Fatima is the Holy Father, the Pope, and Russia, which has split away. That's the error of Russia. Number one error. They split away in schism. Broke away from the Father. And now we are in such a predicament, we need a whole new generation of fathers to undo the disorder in the world caused by fathers, caused by the spreading of errors of Russia. We need a holy father to be a true holy father. I agree. We must not despair. One will come. It has been promised. Listen to Our Lady of Good Success. She speaks of our time. How the church will suffer during this dark night, lacking a prelate. She does not say that we don't have a prelate. We're lacking a prelate and father to guide them with paternal love, gentleness, strength, wisdom, and prudence. Many priests will lose their spirit Placing their souls in great danger, she says. And she asks that we pray fervently that he, that is God, might take pity on his ministers and bring to an end these ominous times. Sending to his church the prelate, the father, who will restore the spirit of his priests and defend the rights of the church. We need fatherly bishops and priests to undo all the damage we've experienced for so many decades. Agreed. But it all starts at home with fathers of families being true fathers. All of them ordering their own soul and their lives and that of their families to heaven making sacrifices in union with Christ to satisfy the justice of God. To the answer to prayers and the fulfillment of promises will be theirs to such fathers. How is this to be done in a more practical way? Well, let's recall the order established by the five F's. Five F's. You can remember this. Faith, family, friends, fitness, finances. Faith, family, friends, fitness, finances. If we keep those five F's in that order, we will find peace and tranquility rising up. So first comes God and our faith. We study, we pray, we start our week with God at Mass today. We pray and we study to maintain it regularly. Family prayer, family rosary, family study. Thus, every father needs to a regulated prayer and life of study. And by study, I mean of the things of God and his church and his saints. I'm not talking about media blogs and trad talking heads of our times addressing some recent event, giving their own private opinions that usually are not very helpful in reestablishing order. And I think a warning is due here. These guys, God bless them, but they're not helping establish the order needed. And I would argue they're attacking the order needed. And I warn you, be careful. I don't care how slick, how smart, how seemingly pious they are. Ask yourself, are these men helping to reestablish the order established by God or not? 
I would argue they are not. I have seen very few that are. Very few, if any. Danger. Danger. Be on your guard. After the faith comes the family, namely the spouse, number one of the family, the spouse. Then the children, next. Then the parents, grandparents, and so on. And the family, the siblings. The proper order needs to be maintained here. A man leaves his parents and clings to his wife. And the woman leaves her parents and clings and submits to her husband. Such is the ordering God has established from the very beginning. Then come the children and the others in their proper place, all things being equal. Sometimes something has to give a little, obviously, a death in the family or something. Faith, family, friends. Then comes the friends whom we help and encourage as we are able in light of our other duties. That is, after fulfilling faith and family duties, we help build up friendships. Then we do all we can to maintain our health and support our own families and the church with the last two of fitness and finance, all the while not allowing any of these five F's to get out of due order. Fathers who follow this order will find their governance produces fruits of peace and tranquility. What attacks this ordering? Today, more than ever, electronic media distracts and attacks this order. Most notably, video games, very addictive. Movies, impure images, getting caught up in the media blogs I've already mentioned, and the latest views that we can hardly do anything about anyway. Check your soul after watching these things. Is it upset? Where is the order that's being established here? Add to this age-old man problem of drinking as well as too much enthusiasm for sports, and you find the source of much disorder in our modern society. Make the five F's your ordering, and you will find yourself not giving way to these attacks on the family. Fatherhood and order are intimately linked, dearly beloved. When fatherhood thrives... Order is present everywhere. Virtue blossoms. Promises are fulfilled. Prayers are answered. Sins are easily forgiven. Heavenly goods are more readily sought and obtained. Dear fathers, let us then now seek first the kingdom of God and his justice. And all these things shall be added unto us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.